Hello, everyone. It's digestive system time. Yay! I know you're excited as I am. All right, so unit eight, this is 8-1, digestive system, 8-1. Um, you know, all this stuff right in here. Okay, let's take a look. So your digestive system takes in food, breaks it down into its individual little molecules, absorbs these molecules into your bloodstream, and then gets rid of all the stuff that your body couldn't digest or break down and expels it as poo. We're going to take a look at this chapter into three chunks. First part is just a basic overview of like how it lies in your abdominal cavity and all the serosa that go with it. And then we have anatomy, so the actual organs themselves, and then the physiology, how they do their job. Okay, the organs of your digestive system fall into two categories. We have the alimentary canal, which goes with these organs here. And then we have the accessory organs, which goes with this category here. So the alimentary canal, I had said that it directly touches the food, but that's actually not the best thing because your teeth and your tongue also directly touch the food. So a better way to describe the alimentary canal is just uh, the tube that extends from your mouth to your anus. And so it goes mouth, pharynx, which is the back of your throat, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and then if you want to get fancy, you can include the uh, you know rectum and the anus as well. Now the accessory digestive organs, these are ones that uh, don't really touch the food, but they just kind of help out. And so, like I said, the doesn't touch the food part doesn't really go. Uh, but the teeth and tongue, they help out, so they're not you know needed essentially, but they definitely help out. Gallbladder, salivary glands, liver, and pancreas is are all examples of accessory glands. All right, so here's a picture kind of showing uh, all of those. So here's the tongue right here, and these are, looks like the epiglottis, which is at the base of your tongue. Esophagus, pouch of your stomach. And then it does a little loopy, which is called the duodenum, and then um, it, that kind of holds your pancreas for you. Then we have the jejunum, which is the first part, and then the ileum, which is the last, like two-thirds. And then it uh, extends to the large intestine here, that right there, that is your appendix. Large intestine, down, 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 till we end up at the anus where the poo comes out. So these are, all these organs here are direct organs of the alimentary canal. Now over here, we see we've got the accessory organs. We've got the glands, a couple different types of glands located in and around your mouth. We've got the liver here, gallbladder here, and pancreas here, which are all um, accessory in the fact that they help with the digestion. Okay, there are six different activities that take place during digestion, and they typically go in this order, but some can occur at the same time as others. First thing is ingestion, and that's just the taking in of materials into your mouth. Um, it could be, you know, liquid, solid, doesn't really matter. So I ingest my food, so I put it into my mouth. Then we have propulsion, which is moving food through the system. Now this starts with swallowing, so the back of your throat, and then continues all the way down to the end, so we'll say goes to the end. Uh, peristalsis is what moves the food along. So if this is your small intestine, I've got what's called a bolus of food. A bolus is uh, just what they call a ball of food when it's inside of you. And so you have contraction here, but relaxation here. And so that kind of propels it forward. And it just continues alternating this contraction here and relaxation to allow it to continue forward. If this guy were contracted too, well, then he'd hit a roadblock and wouldn't be able to go forward, and that would be bad. Okay, the third step we have is mechanical digestion. So this is the physical process of digestion. So it's chewing, it's mixing of food either uh, by your tongue or inside of your stomach, and also segmentation. You don't want this whole giant chunk going in your intestine at the same time. So what it does is it, it breaks it off into small little sections or segments and then gives it to your intestine just a little bit at a time. doesn't want to overwhelm it. Then we have chemical digestion, which is the actual enzymes and the acids and the chemicals that are produced by your mouth, your stomach, and your small intestine that help to take this food in a big chunk and turn it into little chunks. Then we have absorption. As you can see by this picture, um, as we, we start out with macromolecules in the stomach, and then the further down it goes, they get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then they get absorbed by different parts of your intestines. And so if I make this a little bit bigger, to hopefully make it where we can see, um, we can see 
that we've got all these different, uh, we've got triglycerides or fats, proteins, um, sugars, and carbohydrates. So they're all clumped together. But as you go down, you can see that calcium gets absorbed here. Um, folate, fat soluble vitamins, fatty acids, uh, monoglycerides, vitamins B12, water, uh, more B12, more water, intrinsic factor, and then all the way down to really there's nothing left. The only thing that gets absorbed here is water. We get some electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chlorine, and then some bile acids get reabsorbed so you can use them again. So as you can see, a lot of absorption goes on along the way. And then whatever we don't absorb, well, then we're down to defecation, which is the elimination of all the stuff that we can't absorb. And so as you can see here, all these dark shadows, that is all poo. I mean, you can even see the general shape of the poo. So this is like a, gosh, it looks like a six-foot-long turd that is just waiting to get out of this poor little guy's body. Um, so all he's got to be an uncomfortable man. <laughs> that's a lot of poo. So that's the last step. All right, basic functional concepts. Digestive activity is provoked by a range of mechanical stimuli, such as the chewing and the mixing, and chemical stimuli, such as the contents of the food. So when your stomach or your esophagus gets stretched out, that kind of is a signal to begin digestion. Osmo, uh, osmolarity uh, has to do with how much water is in the food the pH contents of the food, the presence of the end products of digestion. So the presence of monosaccharides and amino acids also affect digestion. And two, uh, controls of digestive activity are both extrinsic, so caused by outside factors like your brain and nerves, and intrinsic, such as um, by the stomach and the intestine itself. And then there's something we'll get into later called short reflexes and long reflexes, which have to do with these intrinsic and extrinsic factors. All right, so up next, 8-2 is the digestive organs and how they're placed within your abdominal cavity. So have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.